What's going on guys? Jason here from The Comprehensive Dentist and today we're going to talk about seven different types of composite that you should know in your dental practice. So why should you know these seven different types of dental composite? Well, number one, if you're a general dentist and you're doing restorative dentistry on a regular basis, you're really the subject matter expert for restorative dentistry. So nobody should know these materials better than you. And I'm a firm believer that if you understand why you do things and you understand the materials that you use, it's going to be to your advantage in the clinic on a regular basis. You're going to be able to make good sound clinical decisions because you understand the materials and how to use them. All right, before we talk the different types of composites I want you to know, we need to discuss some components. Now typically composites are comprised of four major components. I am only going to mention two of those components here today. Those components are a resin matrix and filler. Now when you have a composite that has a high filler content, it's going to have better properties. It's going to have better physical properties and better mechanical properties. Typically, we're going to think of it being stronger. If you have a composite that has a very high resin matrix and low filler content, we're typically talking about a product that usually has lower physical properties, lower mechanical properties, and increased polymerization shrinkage. There's many ways that you can classify composites. And if you look at the, all the composites that are on the market, there's a lot of ways that you could categorize these composites. Some of the ways that you may see composites categorized is based off the particle type or the filler type. That's typically the way I like to look at composites and you'll see and understand why shortly. Other ways that you can categorize composites are based off the monomer. Remember, the resin matrix contains a monomer. And depending on what the monomer is in that matrix, you could have monomers that are more traditional based monomers. And now there's a lot of monomers on the market that are low shrinkage monomers. They're basically designed to minimize the shrinkage of the composites when it's polymerized. Now you could also classify your composites based off the viscosity. You think about you have paste composites and you have flowable based composites. You know, they basically are handling in different ways. And so that could be another way that you could classify composites. What about the depth of cure of your composite? How deep or how much thickness of composite can you cure at one time? Right now we have a lot of bulk fill based restorative materials on the market. These typically have a higher depth of cure and allow you to place composite in more bulk increments and cure those increments all at one time compared to traditional incremental fill. And the last way you can classify composites is really based on how you cure the composite. We don't really use a whole lot of self-cure direct composite materials now. Probably the most popular one that you may use on a regular basis would be something similar to like a core buildup material. But typically the majority of the composites that we use right now are basically light polymerized composites. And that is another way that you can classify composite resins. All right, so out of the seven different types of composites we're going to talk about today, these are going to be basically three broad categories that these seven will fit in. And those three broad categories are paste composites, flowable composites, and bulk fill composites. All right, so the first composite we're going to talk about is microfill composites. These have been on the market for an extremely long amount of time. And some of the features of microfills that you may find useful are they typically contain small irregular shaped particles. And these particles have a very high surface area. Now because they're small irregular and they have a high surface area, it's really hard to pack a lot of these particles into the composite. So that means that microfill composites typically have a lower filler content. Lower filler content, remember, means that the physical and mechanical properties of this composite are not as good. So they're not very strong composites. However, microfill composites can be polished and they do have some of the best aesthetics of some of the composites on the market. 
And that's a nice thing if you're looking for good aesthetics. However, if you're thinking about placing these in stress bearing areas like class one, class two restorations in the back of the mouth, you may want to think about a different type of composite. Last thing about microfills is they have a modulus of elasticity that is very similar to the tooth. That means that these composites are really good for things like class five non-carious cervical lesions where you have possible flexure of the tooth and if they flex at the same rate the tooth does, they actually hold up a lot better in the long term. All right, the second category of composites we're gonna talk about is nanofill composites. Now a true nanofill composite means that every particle in the composite is less than 100 nanometers. Now this is ideal because you have such small particles you can pack a ton of these particles into the composite, which means that you have a very high filler content and you have very high strength. Another nice feature is because these particles are so small, you can actually polish the composite very nicely as well. So typically nanofills have kind of the best of both worlds. They have really good strength and really good aesthetics. A good example of a true nanofill would be Filtech Supreme Ultra from 3M SB. All right, the third composite you need to know is microhybrids. This is just one of two different types of hybrid-based composites. Hybrid meaning that you have a mixture of small particles and large particles. Now, with a microhybrid, you actually do get really good filler loading, meaning that the strength of these composites is really good. Polishability is not bad either. Typically though, these composites will look really good on the day of placement, but then over time, months and months later, even years later, they'll start to lose their polish. They'll start to look a lot more rough on the exterior. Another feature of micro hybrid composites is because they contain some larger particles, as this composite wears over time, some of those larger particles at the surface will become more exposed due to the wear and they'll actually be plucked out of the resin itself. And this can leave voids or basically almost something that looks like potholes or a roughened surface of this composite. And if you ever see a composite that looks very rough on the surface, it's a good chance it's a micro hybrid. Next, we're going to talk nano hybrids. Now, when we're comparing nano hybrids to micro hybrids, they're extremely similar. They have basically the same strength and properties because you do have about the same amount of filler loading with these materials. Another thing to consider though is that nano hybrids do contain nano sized particles. However, they're not true nanofills because they do not contain only exclusively nanoparticles. They're actually mixed with other larger sized particles. And again, with micro hybrids and nano hybrids, you do get good strength with these. You get pretty good aesthetics. So really across the board, they're good universally accepted composites. All right, the next category of composite we're gonna discuss is flowable composites. Now these typically have a lower filler content and a higher resin matrix content. Because it contains lower amounts of filler, it's not as strong as paste-based composites. And because the matrix content is higher, it does tend to shrink more. Now that can be kind of a negative side effect because if you're placing this as the sole only restoration, you could have a little bit more shrinkage. These type of composites are really good for small conservative restorations, for liners, or for situations where you're really just kind of placing something like a sealant or a preventive resin restoration. Now, the other thing is they have a modulus elasticity that is very similar to the tooth. This means that the restoration will actually flex with the tooth. That makes these very good for liners and for non-carious cervical lesions such as class five cervical lesions. All right, next composite we're gonna talk about is flowable bulk fills, also known as base bulk fills. Now these typically are a little bit more flowable in nature. However, they are considered bulk fills, which means that you can place these in basically higher or deeper increments than traditional composites. Because they are bulk fills and they're flowable, they typically have a lower filler content and higher matrix content. The lower filler content is advantageous in this case because it does give you an increased depth of cure. Because the filler content is low, however, these composites are not as strong and most of them are indicated as base layers, meaning that you would fill your preparation up, say like four millimeters with your flowable bulk fill, and then you have to actually cap that bulk fill with a two millimeter increment of traditional paste composite. And the last type of composite you need to know is a full body bulk fill, meaning a true bulk fill that you can actually place from the bottom of your prep to the top of your prep in theoretically one increment. 
if it's not too deep, obviously. Now, these type of composite restorations do have a high filler content and they're very strong. And the nice thing is, is you can place them in greater than two millimeter increments. All right, so that's gonna be it for this lesson on seven different types of composite that you need to know in your restorative practice. If you'd like more information on these types of composites and just composites in general, I want you to go over to www.comprehensivedentist.com. Currently right now, the website is offering a one month free trial of the website. You get full access to all the content that is contained there and all the downloads that are available. And after that one month, the price is actually only $9.99 per month. That's actually cheaper than things like Netflix, which so many people have, including myself. I actually love Netflix. Now for $9.99 a month, you get access to everything, including all the new updates that come out on a regular basis. This website is really good for dentists who are one to 10 years out of dental school. And really you've had some experience under your belt. You've done some things clinically, but now it's a good time to go back and revisit some of the didactics and just really connect the didactics to what you're doing clinically. Everything on the site is as evidence-based, as you know, pertainable to that daily practice as it can be. It's really for stuff that you need to know and understand to be the best dentist that you can be. Now with your membership to comprehensivedentist.com, you're gonna get access to Evidence-Based Quarterly, which is a quarterly uh, mini lecture series where you get lectures or mini lectures on basically a bunch of different topics that are popular and important in dentistry. And with all those, you get review guides for all this information that you can download and study at your leisure. Also with your membership, you're gonna get access to all things restorative dentistry, which is really the kind of premier general dentistry or restorative dentistry lecture series that covers so many topics in restorative dentistry. It's really gonna to explain to you the whys of why you do things. You know, so many times I see general dentists who they know how to do procedures, but they don't understand the materials that you use and they don't understand why they do what they do. And so that's what you'll actually learn in this section of the site. And you're also gonna get access to the composite lecture, which will go into more detail on some of the things we discussed today. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this. Hit that like button if you did. If you have not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and subscribe and hit that little bell down there. That lets you know when new content comes out so you don't miss anything. And make sure to follow The Comprehensive Dentist on Facebook and Instagram. We put out things on there that inform you on what's going on with the site. And as always, I will see you next time.